Hello and welcome back to First Oma Presbyterian Women's Group. A big welcome to all, whether you are a member or not. This month's topic um, might not seem very appropriate when we are in the middle of a mini lockdown. The theme is Open Heart, Open Home. It's important to have hope in our lives, so with that in mind, let's talk about hospitality. Hoping we all can join together with friends and family, at least in time for Christmas. And now, first of all, I'm going to read from Romans chapter 12, verses 9 to 21. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honour one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, It is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the, contrary, on the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 9 says, Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. The Gospel is a story of radical hospitality. The birth, death, resurrection, ascension and return of Christ show us that our God has gone to tremendous lengths to search us out, welcome us and make us his people. Once we were separated from Christ, alienated, strangers with no hope and without God, but Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross, so that though we were far off, we might be brought near by the blood of Christ. This is a wonderful, radical, transformative hospitality and we stand amazed that such grace has been extended to us. Now, as image bearers of our God, we are called to the ministry of hospitality. We are called to have a heart that seeks to search out people who are far off, on the fringes, disconnected and lovingly bring them close. In the book, The Gospel Comes Without a House Key, Rosario Butterfield writes about the many blessings of extending hospitality as strangers become neighbours and then become family of God. As we extend hospitality to others, we should pray that God will draw them closer to his heart. Whilst most verses in the Bible that mention hospitality are speaking of hospitality to strangers, our one another verse is referring to hospitality within the body of Christ. In 1 Peter 4, Paul teaches that as we wait for Christ to return, we as believers are to be praying, loving, offering hospitality and serving. The very word hospitality can strike fear into the hearts of some women, causing them to break out in a cold sweat. This is because we mix up hospitality with entertaining, but they're poles apart. Entertaining is concerned with the external, seeking to impress guests while keeping them at arm's length. Entertaining wants to create a beautiful setting with gourmet food, four-course dinner, candles on the table and an unflappable, immaculate hostess. Hospitality is about humbly serving our friends, opening up our hearts and our homes as they come and find love and a safe haven. Some say they are too busy for hospitality. We might be too busy for entertaining, but we're never too busy for hospitality. We all need to eat. Boil a few more potatoes, throw another cup of rice into a saucepan. Don't complicate it. 
Pray that God will help us to learn how to weave the ministry of hospitality into our lives until it becomes the norm rather than the exception. We may have to make adjustments to our schedule, maybe even be inconvenienced from time to time, but if we seek to live our lives conscious of the radical hospitality that God has extended to us, our ministry of hospitality to others will simply flow out of a humble, thankful heart. Keeping in mind God's radical hospitality towards us is also the key to offering hospitality, as Paul says, without grumbling. And now I'm going to demonstrate for you a little recipe that my mother gave me years and years ago. And I often use it for when I'm having people around for supper. It's really simple, quick, and I have to say very tasty. And I hope you will enjoy it. And now for this little tasty recipe, which by the way, doesn't have a name. First of all, your ingredients. You're going to need a pack of butter puffs, if you can get them. Sometimes they're difficult to find. You're going to need an onion. I'm chosen a red onion, uh, but obviously a white onion would do as well. I just find the red a wee bit sweeter. You need a tin of chopped ham. You need a jar, or you don't need the whole jar, but you need to add tomato sauce. And then some butter for uh, buttering the butter puffs. First of all, preheat your oven to 180 degrees. Now, the red onion I have here, chop it as finely as you can. And here we have mashed up the ham, and I just used that with a fork. And now I'm going to put them both together into the bowl. <laughs> Sure, it's with eight the onion and the hands well mixed through. I don't add salt because there's actually quite a lot of salt already in the ham, and I, and I don't use salt a lot in cooking myself anyway. But I suppose you can do it for your own taste. And now I'm going to add the tomato sauce. I haven't got any measurement for this because you just need to add it and just make sure it all comes together and you'll know, you'll know when you see it how much you need to put in. So we're stirring that in so we can bring it all together so it sticks together. I need a good bit more obviously. we're going to put some butter on the butter puffs. Some people might prefer not to bother with the butter, but I like the butter on the butter puffs. Just putting a wee slather of butter on each of the butter puffs. You don't need to use very much at all. Um, actually, sometimes it causes hard to get butter puffs. You could actually use this, this topping for a pizza base. I think that would be quite nice too. I'm sure there's all kinds of variations. But anyway, now there's the, the butter and the butter puffs. And all I have to do now is take each butter puff and just using my fork, just put it on like so. Just enough, enough to cover the top of it. As I said to you, I don't bother putting salt in it at all because the ham already is quite salty. I might just at the end sprinkle a wee bit of pepper in each one. Now I have used this over the years, as I say, my mum gave me this recipe many, many years ago. Don't know where she got it from, but it's really tasty. And instead of just, if you people around for supper and you're always giving them sandwiches or cracker and cheese this is a good alternative and I have to say 
There are people can vouch for anybody who's been to my house for supper. Quite often I've had it and been surprisingly delighted with the taste of it. So that's the last one now that I'm putting on. And then all I'll do now is I'm going to put them onto a baking tray. You don't need to heat the tray beforehand at all. So I'm just setting them on the tray and we'll pop them into the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes is really enough. But you'll know the top of them, uh, whether they're ready or not. That's simply it, so now I'm going to put them into the oven. Sometimes we think hospitality is just about spending time with other Christians or our current circle of friends and only inviting those into our home who are similar to us, who think the same as us and with those whose company we are comfortable rather than looking beyond to those who, whom God wants us to invite into our homes. However, it is important to remember that biblical hospitality is not about entertaining or being the perfect hostess and having the cleanest house. It is simply about inviting others, both believers and non-believers, people who are like us and people who aren't like us, into our homes to share a simple meal and some conversation around a table, then using this as an opportunity to share the good news of Jesus' work in our ordinary lives. In our culture today, hospitality is a vital form of discipleship. People are longing for deeper relationships and connections with others, and opening our homes and lives gives us a unique opportunity to share the gospel with others. And I hope you have enjoyed that little recipe and maybe you will make it at some stage and share it with friends. And I hope you will find it as tasty as I do and Peter. So now I'm going to finish with prayer. Heavenly Father, help us to remember your hospitality to us and how you came and saved us how you opened the door and invited us to come into your presence. When we think of the ultimate hospitality we have received, help us also to extend hospitality to those around us. Give us the courage to invite others into our homes and into our lives, especially those we do not know well or who are different from us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.